Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us start from the very basics. So what is operon? So we will start it from there. So let us try to understand what is operon. Now operon is nothing but a set of structural genes which are arranged under a common promoter and regulated by a common operator. Now I am sure that you must be remembering what is structural genes and what is a promoter. Remember we discussed about the various regions of the transcription unit of a DNA. So in the transcription unit of DNA, promoter initiated the process of transcription and terminated terminator ended the process of transcription. So all the genes that were located between promoter and terminator, they were the structural genes. So now when, I, when we are going to talk about the process of regulation, we get to know that there is something called operator as well. So what is operator? Between promoter and structural genes, there is a region of DNA which is known as the operator and this region plays a very important role in controlling the gene expression. Now please remember promoter, structural gene, these were all the po all a certain portion of DNA. So similarly operator also is a portion of DNA. And it is always located adjacent to the promoter because the role of operator is very much linked with pro promoter and that is why it is always located adjacent to promoter. Now whenever these structural genes are turned off, what happens? When we say that the structural gene is turned off, that means no transcription takes place. If no transcription takes place, that means what? That means no mRNA will be formed. If no mRNA is formed, then what will happen? Protein synthesis will not take place. On the other hand, if the genes are turned on, then mRNA will be produced and as a result, protein synthesis will also take place. Now, who decides whether the genes will be turned on or off? Is it the operator who decides that? Well, operator plays a very important role in this decision, but it is not the operator who directly regulates or directly controls the gene expression. There are some proteins or there are some substances called regulators. So this is again a new term. So there are these regulators which, which are also termed as regulatory proteins. These regulators bind to the operator region. And once they bind to the operator region, they can control the process of replication by binding or not binding to the operator. So basically regulator and operator together can control the gene expression. So we can say it like that. So now since we know that the most important role in gene expression regulator is performed by regulators and operators. So let us know a little more about both of them. So as I said, operator is a sequence on DNA which interacts with regulatory proteins to control the accessibility of promoter region. Now how they control the turning on or turning off of structural gene is by making the promoter region accessible or non-accessible. So they actually try to control the promoter region in turn because we know that promoter region is the one which initiates the process of transcription. How does the promoter region initiate? its transcription by providing a binding site for RNA polymerase and RNA polymerase is the enzyme which actually causes transcription. Now if the promoter region doesn't allow RNA polymerase to bind to itself, what will happen? Transcription will not be able to take place. So the operator and the regulator, they together somehow ensure that when they want to put the genes in off position, they somehow make the promoter inaccessible. Whereas when they want the genes to be in turned on situation, they make the promoter accessible. So this is how, this is what we had discussed from our previous understanding. So this, the green structure is the promoter. This is promoter. The red structure was the terminator and in between was the structural genes. But now we have introduced another important section of DNA and that section is going to be present adjacent to promoter to somewhere here. We are going to have the region called the operator. 
So let us try to discuss the structure of an operon in little more detail. So as I said, any operon consists of three main components. That is the promoter. So where is the promoter? This is the promoter. Now, purpose of promoter is the same. It remains the same. It initiates transcription and it allows RNA polymerase to bind with it. Now, once RNA polymerase binds with it, then it can actually cause transcription. It decides which gene to participate in mRNA synthesis. As I told you before also, that the location of the promoter decides a lot of stuff which will be the coding strand which will be the template strand which all genes will uh, uh, participate in the formation of the rna strand so this promotion loco location is recognized by rna polymerase and that is how the process of transcription is initiated that is why it is the initiator The next portion is the operator and this is the segment between promoter and the structural gene. So here you can see this blue colored region which you see here is the operator which is located between the promoter and the structural genes. So this what does it do? The regulatory proteins bind here. So some regulatory proteins can come and they can bind here. Now what will these regulatory proteins do? The regulatory proteins are often termed as regulators as well. So these regulators can actually physically obstruct the RNA polymerase to carry on the process of transcription. So just understand it this way. Let it, I mean, I'm just drawing it in a simpler way because here it might be more complicated. So I just made it simple. So this is the gray color shows the entire strand of DNA. Green color is the promoter. Blue color is the operator. And here this pinkish color is the structural gene. Now what happens? This yellow colored structure which you see here, that is a regulator. So as when the regulators come and bind to these operator regions, what happens? It physically obstructs the flow of the RNA polymerase. It doesn't allow RNA polymerase to traverse through the structural gene section. So when the RNA polymerase comes, it is unable to bind to the promoter region because due to the presence of this, the RNA polymerase doesn't get proper space to react with that part of the promoter which helps the RNA polymerase to bind to it. So in a way, it makes the promoter region inaccessible to RNA polymerase. Now what will happen if RNA polymerase is not able to bind to the promoter region, the process of transcription will not be initiated. If transcription is not initiated, then mRNA will not be formed. So that means the genes are in the turned off position. So the genes are turned off. Why? Due to the binding of the regulator in the, to the operator region. So this is the purpose of operator and this is how the operator can actually control the gene expression. And finally, the third part of the operon is the structural genes and these are the genes that code for mRNA and they are regulated by the operon. So you please do not get con confused. While we were discussing transcription, I told you that the transcription unit of a DNA consists of three parts and that was promoter, structural gene and terminator because that time we were talking about the process of transcription. So we were bothered about the transcription unit of DNA. That means Means that part of DNA which will participate in the process of transcription but now we are talking about that portion of DNA which participates in the process of gene expression regulation so that part of DNA which will control the gene expression so that portion of DNA is termed as the operon and operon consists of the same promoter but now you have a region between promoter and structural gene that is called operator so promoter operator and the structural gene. Now in case of regulation of gene expression, the terminator doesn't play any role. Terminator has a role to play only during transcription. That is why it is a part of the transcription uh, unit of DNA, but it is not a part of the operon. So I hope the concept is clear now. Okay, so let's see at now what happens when this regulator which was by which was already binded to the operator when it moves back when it leaves 
the operator. So now the operator region is free and as a re result the RNA polymerase continues with the process of transcription and therefore mRNA will be synthesized. So in this situation we say that the genes are being turned on. So let us look at some of the other things about operons. Operons are more commonly seen in the prokaryotes. They are primarily seen in prokaryotes. However, later they have also been seen in some of the eukaryotes like the nematodes. But in prokaryotes, they are very common. In fact, here in this lesson, we are going to talk about one of the operons of the bacteria E. coli and that is the LAC operon. So we will discuss about LAC operon in detail. So each operon has its specific operator and repressor. Now what is repressor? So now as I said in an organism there can be multiple operons operating. Now each operon will have its specific operator and repressor. So what is repressor? The repressor is a category of the regulatory protein. Now we will discuss it very soon that regulatory proteins can be of two types. One is repressor and the other one is activators. So for each operon they will have their specific operator and they will have their specific regulators as well. So, so that the interaction between them can solve the purpose of that particular operon. Now these regulatory proteins can be either activators or they can be repressors. Now the name itself tells quite a few things about them. Activators, something which activate things. So activators are those regulatory proteins that act positively on the operon. That means if these activators are attached to the operator, the genes will be turned on. So that is what is referred as positive regulation because when this type of operators are attached to the gene, I mean when these type of activators are attached to the operator, the genes will be turned on. That means due to their attachment, the RNA polymerase will be able to do its job and that is why it is termed as positive regulation. Whereas repressors are just the opposite. So repressors are those which act negatively on the operon. So it is just by mistake. So it is not positively but negatively on the operon. So this is termed as negative regulation. So in this case what's going to happen? So when these produce bind to the operators, the RNA polymerase will be blocked and that is why the impact will be negative. So the process of the uh, transcription will not be able to take place. So this is known as negative regulation. So these are the two types. One is positive regulation due to activators and negative regulation due to repressors. So now the question is these repressors whether they are activators or repressors they are also proteins. Now who are producing these proteins because whatever we understand from our knowledge so far we saw that the proteins get synthesized from these genes itself, right? So RNA uh, will synthesize the proteins and the RNA is created from the some, some of these part of DNA. So is it necessary that the protein has to be created by the same operon like the regulatory proteins which participate in a particular operon? Is it necessary that it has to be created or it has to be produced by the same operon? Well, no, that is really not necessary. So the way we have a set of structural genes in a similar way, we have a set of regulatory genes which are responsible for the production of these type of regulatory proteins. So the regulatory proteins are synthesized by the regulatory genes. So where do we see these regulatory genes? Now these regulatory genes can be a part of the operon or they cannot be a part of the operon as well. They can be located near the operon or they can be located far away for the operon. But these genes will produce only the regulatory proteins. They will not produce the structural proteins. Right, So the repressor for an operon is not necessarily coded by that operon, that is for sure. But one important thing to be noted is that these regulatory genes get constantly expressed. So there is nobody who can control or who can regulate the function of these regulatory genes because these are constantly expressed genes. That means they are continuously going to produce the regulatory proteins because only if you have the regulatory proteins 
available only then your operons will be working so there is no control on the regulatory genes but the regulatory proteins produced by the regulatory genes can control the structural genes with the help of the operon so I hope this idea is clear now. So any protein will get synthesized with the help of RNA and RNA will be produced by the genes and genes are located on DNA. So the process will remain the same. The way you have structural genes which produce mRNA and mRNA then codes for proteins. In a similar way the regulatory genes will also produce RNA which will produce the regulatory proteins. And those regulatory proteins will be produced continuously and they, their job is to control the gene expression. So that this is their job to sometimes to get attached to the operator and turn the gene off or getting attached to the operator and turning the gene on. So that is their purpose. So now here in this lesson, it is not possible for us to discuss about all the operons in a prokaryote. But the first operon that was completely described was the lac operon in the E. coli. So lac operon is the operon which we are going to discuss in detail in this lesson. Now once we discuss lac operon, you will get an idea about how all the operons work. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.